Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. Cherie, was it the word sanctuary? What, talk to us a little bit about that. Wildlife preserve. Preserve, and, sorry, yes. Yeah. Um, this is the donations to the happy place. Um, <laughs> On your website. Yeah, shout out to Miri, my stepsister, who actually made the name for it. And um, Talk about that a little more. They may not yeah. have heard about mm. what it is and, so, and why. This is a donation to a wildlife preserve that we're making, and it's specifically not like tundra or rainforest, desert, because those places are really um, already quite um, a popular place to see a lot of animals. So the worst part right now of the world is the forest because people are destroying it cutting wood, taking streams, making dams, um, even, this sounds bad, but some people might, might be camping and they'll find a beaver dam next to the river and they'll start taking sticks from it to try to make a fire. Um, but people are slowly destroying these beautiful forests that we have, that God has created for us to enjoy. And these forests are something that we have to work very hard to save because honestly, how are we going to breathe? How are the, how is everything going to survive without the forest and the things in it? Like people hunt, people hunt for carpets, which we don't really need because we can already make carpets out of wool and are and making carpets out of um out of sheep cotton doesn't hurt the sheep and it doesn't hurt us and it doesn't really hurt anything because you can reuse that carpet to make something new but when you kill a let's say a bear and you take the carpet and you just leave the corpse out there to just rot what's the cause i mean mm-hmm. nothing maybe Maybe nothing's going to find that, and it'll just be there. Yeah, I know. I've never thought about it like that before. So your your plan is to do an animal preserve to put keep animals safe there, is that right? And it will be completely cut off to any human beings. So, so that, you... yeah, cool. so that um we can keep this land lush and healthy for the animals here to grow and live a healthy life with their families. How long do you plan? When do you hope to have this uh, vision in place, locked in, ready to start and uh, and open up for the animals? Well, in my mind, any accomplishment is an accomplishment that should be made done the second that we can. So there's no really set date for it, but whenever we can, we absolutely will. Oh my lord! So this could be your this could be your um your your job when you're older. Amazing! And then when you're traveling the world trying to save it, um, you can have other people in place looking after it, like your mum. Mm-hmm. I love it. Is it, it, it that? So in order to do that, I remember your mum actually sharing with me on the on the episode. It was either in the episode or off air, but your mum shared to me about how you'd like to buy some land to do this. Is, is, is there any land near you? Have you got an idea of, of how to do it and, and where to do it? Well, we're hoping somewhere with, um, honestly, most people would like make a preserve somewhere where there's already, um, there's not really a lot of trees. Um, and I'm doing exactly that. My plan, honestly, I don't think I've told anybody yet. But I'm hoping to buy the land without a lot of trees 
but then kind of like make it a forest, like mm. have trees planted there, but not in rows. So it doesn't look like a farm, like made crisscross crazy so that um, even like, even like somebody, like I can even go out there and just like bring a box of pine um, seeds and just throw them and hope that they grow. Because Amazing. that's the way it is with nature. You never know. And kind of like, it's kind of like for animals, it's like life or death. Like you come to a stream in the morning to get a drink and then you drink and you're wondering, this might not be here when I come back tonight. Yeah. And it's and it's different and it's changing. And I want it to be like that. I want it to be kind of like, hopeful for the animals to be able to live a less scary life. I'm hoping that um, we can get some land with a natural stream fro- flowing so that animals can drink. Hopefully we'll, um, and I'm at the point where even if there aren't animals there and they're kind of all like sick, I'm at the point where I would have them sent to vets if there was a fox there that was with a hurt let leg i'm at the point where um if there aren't animals i would um i would pay people at zoos to put them in and if there are animals but they're really hurt i would pay as much as it costs to have them helped and i just want to help in whatever way i, I can love i love that and the, the books uh, the book sales could help with all of this as well couldn't it yeah yeah amazing so Let's go to the why. And I discuss people's journeys not far off every day. And I talk about the why. Um, what, why, did, why, why all of this? I mean, you did mention it briefly before, but yeah, how, why did you start this whole journey? And you've just, you've just started, it looks to me like you've started off with this idea and it's just gone to the, like, into a big wide wide growth and I, that's how i feel i've done with the podcast right i've come up with all these different ideas as i've got going what what where did this spark for you where was it when you're just sitting in bed you had none of this in your life it was all blank you were just a, a kid going to school where did it all start and why well for me when i was a kid i had very high emotions well i'm i'm a kid duh but yeah <laughs> a, sm- a smaller young kid yeah i get it yeah I'm, I'm, like <laughs> Like, more like eight years old. No, oh, okay. I, I wrote my book when I was eight years old. Um, five, let's say. Yeah. It was hard for me to speak up, um, to say things that I felt were uncomfortable, stressful, sad to me. And right now, honestly, I feel like at that point, I, cr- I felt like I couldn't have a voice. But there are people out there who have it so much harder than I did and it was so hard for them when they were at least four or five years old and they would come home and they would feel hopelessness every minute but everybody has a voice the only thing it takes for you to be heard is to use it and we all need to be heard and that is what is most important to the younger kids to the people who feel like they don't have a voice it's not that you don't have a voice it's that your voice isn't heard but if you want to be heard you have to use your voice louder and speak up Mm. so some people don't know how to use their voice do they yeah and that's what we've got to work on as well that messy middle part and that's what your mum's doing as well, isn't she? She's very good at that side of things. Yeah, cool. Now, you've done some amazing things outside of the books and this beautiful plan of the preserve. You've also been on, you've got your own podcast. Let's talk about the podcast. What's your podcast called? My podcast is officially called What's Up Young Authors. It is um, included with a theme song. After the introduction, and I interview guests that have written books who are about my age, sometimes younger, sometimes older, 
And, um, well, they're all very talented, and I wouldn't change anything in any of them. Oh. For what I've heard, almost everybody I meet is an extraordinary entrepreneur that if they... If Hollywood knew, they would send a letter. And, like, a lot of people that I meet, I know that they have this talent, but they don't really use it. But these people that I meet on my podcast are absolutely extraordinary. And their voices are like none that I've ever heard. And I wouldn't change anything on any of them. How many guests have you had so far then? How many have we had? Oh, that's a good question. I Probably think like 12. I, I was yeah. going to say, I think we're at 12. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And did they, did you find them or did they find you? We found them and we invited them. Oh, and how did you find them? Well, so sometimes I find it in the week junior, the magazine that is locally sent out to kids around the world. and. Um, sometimes we look it up and we type something like young authors locally, young authors around the world, and we find people who use their voice in such an extraordinary way that we think we have to help them use it. Amazing. And can you give me an example of one of a, a guest? You don't, you know, I mean, you don't need to share names. Or I suppose you could because it's going public. But um, what could. could you give an example of a scenario or a book um, of, what they've, of the what they've done so far? I'm going to use the names because I think they'll really like it. Yeah. But, um, okay. So these are Isla and Kala, um, some of my close friends, Rebiki. And, they are so talented and kind, and honestly, I probably shouldn't say that, but they have, I have never met anyone like them. They have scary stories for creepy kids, they have the sequel, Amazing. and they have a create your own, and so these children have made such a mark in my life, and... We're actually planning to make an episode where they come over to our house and um, we're going to, some of their books have recipes and we're going to make a few of the recipes. And you're going to film and, it? For a Halloween, mm -hmm. for a Halloween special. Yeah. Amazing. And, you can uh, for uh, a uh, Halloween uh, special. Wow. So that the author of those books is local to you? They live in Traverse City. Is that close to you? So, um, pretty close. We live in Tosky. It's about okay. three hours away. Well, that's not pretty close, but if that's close well, to you, then okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like far away from me for some reason is like, Australia. like, yeah, Australia. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, it's I meet so, like, no, I meet so many, go, um, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I think there's a slight delay. I apologize. You, you meet, sorry, you go, you meet. I meet so many people, like people in Florida, people in Colorado, people in Illinois. And honestly, the closest to me is like Illinois. Yeah. So That's amazing. <laughs> I, I, I love that you're, you, because you've built this in a way, you're kind of manifesting and people are coming to your, in your direction and because you're looking for it and it's, oh, it's beautiful. So 12 guests. Wow. And you've got a website. People can come and find you if need be. I didn't realize there was that many authors out there, to be fair. You were the first, and now I know of more, and now I know of 12 more. So that's phenomenal. I need to keep my eyes open to this. I'm going to have to convince and my son to write a book so he can appear on your podcast. Anyway. Some other um... – <laughs> bless you. You sound like a bird. Um, <laughs> but some other kids I know are Gunner J. Duck. Um Oh gosh, bless you. Bless you. Um, Elsie. Um, I remember this boy who made a comic series. I can't remember his name currently, but he's really awesome. Look him up. <laughs> and um, yeah, there are a lot of people out there who have came into my eyes. I mean, lives. 
gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and I hear them and they're just talking like, oh, yeah, I, I've written like seven books. And they're like going about it like it's their normal life. And I'm, and my jaw just drops to the table and they're like, why are you looking at me? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, it's a normal part of your life now, it seems to me, because you, you're so good at this and you're so good at what you do. And I think it just, I think it, I feel like that's that's how I view you right this is just a normal part of your life look i mean look behind you look how it's all set up it's incredible so you do that that's the podcast then what's up young authors love it and i love all the things behind you that represent that podcast uh, you've got a better studio than me may i add um but you also appeared on tv and i think this is where it, you, you said it you, you you appeared on tv tell us about your tv appearance have you done one have you done several or oh, let's talk about the first one if you've done more Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.